afternoon, everyone. Let's begin today. Um, I hope you all are having a good week. I know it's almost the mid of the semester. Um, and it might be hectic. And, uh, you all have lots of things to do. I'm really thankful that you got uh, enrolled into this course and making your time to study a little bit. Everyone is really very hard working, I can say, and uh, brilliant submitting everything on time. I'm thankful about that. In case you need any services apart from the class, like EAP services for any kind of writing, you want any EAP mentor or tutor to evaluate and give you feedback, I have shown you the website where you can book the slots. Uh, feel free to do that. Even if on the assignments that you submit to me and I give you feedback sometimes or actually most of the times I might not give you in person in class face to face feedback and if you need that in class we might not get that time for all 12 13 students you can book a slot if you want to talk to me about your submission and the feedback I gave if you have anything to say just book a slot and we'll meet one-on-one -on -one in zoom Okay, that if, if that helps, if you think you need that, go ahead, feel free to do that. Um, so let's begin. Today we are uh, the last segment of literature review, which is quotes and citation. So we got to know a little bit about how to choose a topic first. And then based on my topic, I'll look for sources. So I'll gather resource materials, published papers, I expect you have uh, visited library or the library website, talk to the librarian. You have already gathered your materials that you think might help you in your argument to develop your paper. And next, we do summary, evaluation, uh, paraphrasing, and citations, which is today's class. And that's how we actually conclude our literature review section. We'll, We'll definitely submit a complete literature review uh, for this course. Not right now, after a few classes. And I'll give you feedback on your complete literature review also. So let's begin. There's a little difference uh, the way generally we understand the word quote. We, meet, we definitely know uh, that this is what quote is, right? You frame it with the double quote and something is there in between. That's the basic definition. But in academic writing, there's a little difference. Uh, this is not how quote is defined only. It's defined in a, it's called the quote sandwich. The quote sandwich as in there is a bread, and then there is a quote, and there is another bread, loaf of bread. And that's how the whole definition of quote is made. Uh, let me show you examples. So let's have a look at this, first of all. This example is also the definition of the quote, which is a general definition, the way we understand quote. We use word to word uh, from the resource, which do not change anything. We use double quote, right? We all know this definition, what quote is. So we also need to understand before we quote that why using too much quote is not encouraged because it will not help you to maintain flow. You cannot make changes, right? In subject, while demonstrative adjectives, you want to add transitions, you want to add your argument. So you, it, it will ruin your flow. So we discourage using lots of quotes. Uh, paraphrasing, summarizing is better. I'll, I'll get to the point when we must quote. We'll talk about it. Another point is the logic of using a quote is to support my argument, not to overpower my argument. My argument is the most central topic. And as the supporting evidence, we are using quotes, not as a central topic of discussion. So it cannot be overused, that's why. Another point why we should be very careful about using quote, uh, if there's too much quotations in one passage or paragraph in one page, then it's actually not adding anything new rather than it's uh, uh, 
merely repetitive or something that already has been done, we are saying the same thing again. So it's, it should be our voice always which should be the central part and we use code just to support our argument and when we shoot code first of all sometimes there are beautifully written lines by beautifully written i do not mean poetic there might be very uh, meticulous writing even in academic writing where changing a word might Paraphrasing a passage or summarizing it might ruin the essence of it, the beauty of it. Then you code it. How much we can code? One line, two line, one passage, five lines. There is no fixed rule on that. I'll show you a few examples where we can code even kind of a paragraph size. And we'll see that maybe in our scholarly articles as well. And we also see quotations in small phrases, two, three words. Right? So it's, it, it varies how much, what should be the length of it, that's what I mean. So if it's that needed, if it's composed in that way, paraphrasing will ruin it. Summarizing will ruin the essence of it, we can go. Right? And uh, only when we'll use it, when it will make our argument more valid. We do not need to, need to use it if our argument is enough, by the way. If our argument is enough, we don't need to quote it. We can cite it. There's a little difference, quote and cite. We'll get to that point also uh, when we use uh, footnotes, endnotes, or within parentheses, you cite. We do not quote as in double quote, exact their words. We don't need that if your argument is enough. Hmm? Uh, also, there's another example of, uh, that we might see in many papers, we see quotations when we want to elaborately discuss that particular argument, or we might disagree with someone's view. So we quote them and then we explain why we disagree with that. Or we have a different kind of finding. My res research might have discovered something else which contradicts with previous research or previous other arguments. We then quote and then we explain our findings. So that's another instance where we might see quotations. So now the basic, as I said, the sandwich code, the, the way it is composed, a quotation, is this. So we introduce the code, we give the code, and then we explain why we are using it. We just don't leave it like that when we code it. For instance, let's have a look at this example. Any volunteer who'd like to read it out loud? Anyone? Television was introduced in 1995. Violence had no reported cases of eating disorder. In 1998, three years after programs from the United States and Britain began broadcasting their 16% of the world survived, surveys reported rising. Bobo's point is that the rising counts of dieting is fairly even to remote places across, across the globe. So, you see this, we quote it in between. You, you introduce what the topic is. You end with the finding or another argument that you want to add with the finding. This kind, kind of a style of a sandwich. We'll have a look at more examples, what do you mean by, by sandwich coding? Let's have a look at other kind of citations first. Do I have those links? Oh yes, I have those links here. Let's look at it right now. I forgot um, these links. Yeah, a code sandwich. Gotcha. So you have a top bread, and then a filling, and then the bottom bread. And in the top bread, you explain the context. In the filling, you quote it. And in the bottom bread, you explain the significance of the code, why it was significant, what was the result of that data that you coded. So that's the basic structure. We do not only code it. We explain why we are using it or what we are extracting from that data. That might have talked about a lot of things, but what's our extraction? What I'm using from that data 
that I that might connect me to my next paragraph that is my finding possibly. Hmm? There's also a PDF attached to it. Uh, the second link is a PDF with lots of more examples. The same thing is explained. We introduce it, we quote it, and we explain it. You can have a look at these uh, PDFs and the explanations even later on. These are pretty easy resources. We all are on the same page. Any confusion? So that's how quote sandwich works. Now, moving on to citation. When we do not quote like directly quote maybe, or sometimes we might quote. And here we see two kinds of citations, integral and non-integral. We all are aware of these two terms, integral and non-integral. We'll also discuss right now which one we see in our field or which one we like, even if we do not know which one is applicable in my field. Which one we like as in, let's say, these two examples in these two slides. Uh, let me read the first one for you. Scholars have suggested practical guidelines for implementing the new paradigm in language assessment. For example, Lewenberg suggested that we first identify, then we quote it. Now, contradictory to this one, let's have a look at the, another example where Lewenberg is cited in a different way. Not a part of the sentence. Not a verb is used. Make sense? We are talking about it. These guidelines include identifying grammatical norms in standard English that generally apply to varieties of English. So it has been actually summarized. Or a particular aspect may have been paraphrased. And the idea is not mine, so I'll use a citation. We call it in-text citation. In-text citations are two kinds. It could be non-integral, where the resource is not part of the subject, verb. We'll talk about styles later on. Styles as in first name, last name, publication date, page number, what to do with those things. That's a different topic. Now we're talking about these two kinds. So integral citation, where we see that we use a reporting verb, right, that we, many of us have already used it in the summarization that you submitted. Those suggested about AI something and blah, 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 right? So it's that's the style. We see in integral citation, we include the resource as the subject of the sentence. So now my question to you, which one you think you prefer? Is there any particular liking or you are okay with two of those? Nothing is wrong. We see both in any academic field, by the way. <coughs> is there any particular that you think you prefer writing? This one? Yeah. Uh, cool. It keeps the writer power. Very good. <laughs> and it's my assumption someone is... Very good. Important. And that's common also in the CSU. Uh, it depends from field to field also. Uh, okay. It might vary from field to field, that's what I mean. Right. Uh, this, this one you see more? Right. Yeah. So you see mostly non-integral citations in parentheses. Yeah. And in this case, the power remains to the author, which is, I mean, the researcher, that is, we all. Why? Because we are using the subject. We are in charge of the flow. We are free to use what verbs we want. But here, the subjects are not totally in my control. But that's not also wrong. You can also maintain flow if, the, if there is cohesion, if the logical progression is right and correct, whatever you're explaining. So, is there anyone who prefers or may have seen in their own discipline integral citations more? In the summary submissions, most of you have used, by the way, integral citations. I hardly have seen non-integral. Hardly. I mean, I'm not saying I haven't seen at all. Hardly. Mostly have said about, uh, I mean, made those the subject. Those suggested that, or, you know, but... And that's also fine. That's also fine. We do that. Anyone who 
prefers this. Everyone prefers this in their discipline. Please, please go ahead. Yeah. I guess the, I actually prefer the table assessment because there might be a, they're interpreted in a wrong way. I mean, summarizing, mm -hmm. paraphrasing in a different way than going to the uh, original author's idea. Very good point. Um, Thank you. Then, yeah, you'll be totally disappointed and then the Correct. outcome or result will be totally different. Very good. And so, especially you're in the field of law, right? Yes. 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 Right. Makes sense. You know, so legal language is totally different. Uh, and yes, it happens. You are paraphrasing, you have the power, that means you have the power to ruin it also. You don't have only the power to fix it. So that could happen. So we also see mix and merge. As in sometimes we use this style, sometimes we merge this style. So it varies. Anything you would like to add? Uh, someone else raised hand also to speak. Yeah, please. This one? Yeah. Nice, yes. So, yes. Um, also, I need, I need the non Sorry? I need the non non oh, non integral. This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we, uh, may I ask? I forgot which discipline? Uh, biology. Biology, okay. Hmm. Okay. I think we all need a basic technique from Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So it, it varies from topic to topic sometimes. And it's not like we have to use only one, I would say. We see both the ones. Jeff, you want to say something? Yeah. Huh? Which one you see in your field? Do you know? Um, non integral? Non -integral? Yeah. yeah, in parenthesis mostly. Hmm. Hmm. That's only what we use for in our chapter. It is called. Then you have used both, integral and non-integral both. Uh, if you use them, uh, I mean the resource materials as your subject and verb, then that would be like that. Now the point is, the summarization task we did, we had only one author. We were actually only talking about him. That's why it's pretty obvious to use him as a subject. So that sum summary was cited in an integral pattern. But when you have multiple authors and you have your own research also, we also see this style when you are leading the readers with your language. Now, that also varies as he also shared. Sometimes it's better to quote the person in an integral way so that we do not ruin the essence or the originality of that particular resource. That also is very much obvious. So we'll have a look at our scholarly articles and when it, what is done. If they're merged or if only one pattern is followed, whatever is done, we'll have a look at in those articles. Um, in, in Canvas, you might see uh, citation analysis uh, section. You don't have to do it right now. We'll get there soon. So now the main important thing is this self-guided slide. Self-guided slide as in if you're not aware of it. Uh, I would request all of you to be on this slide right now so that I can help you with this most important thing of styling. We all know that we either heard of it or we might have already seen and done it. MLA, APA, Chicago, I, E, 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 C, S, E. C, S, E is not here, computer science and engineering. It's, it's a, just an abbreviation of styling format. Harvard, they have their own styling format. Chicago has their own styling format. So it's mostly in my discipline, for instance, we use MLA. Many use APA in linguistics, in education even, even in scientific discipline, we see uh, APA. So these are different styles the way I will cite. Should I mention the year of publication or not, page number or not, how to mention the page number, first name of the author or last name of the author or both names or journal name, should I do that or not? So this all will vary based on this. Now, which one you would follow? For that, you have to go to this side, ND Library Guides. Or if you cannot 
find your style. You can talk to supervisor, professor, your field expert, your librarian, but you have to know your field specific citation style and format. You know what I mean? And then what you have to do, for instance, let me show you. If you do not have, any of you have used RefWork? RefWork is this, let me show you. It generates your citations automatically and in the, within the account you can access it free. For instance, let's say education if it's my uh, discipline. Um, annotated bibliography I just clicked. So let's say I'll click citation styles. Um, RefWork is a citation management software and there are many others also. So you can play around with all of those. So let's say I log into RefWork. I have to use my email ID. I have an account. We all can do it. We all can do it now. Rather than signing in, use my institution. There is a bottom bar, use my institution, and this, then just type Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame. So now we are on this page. This page, you can see here, on the left-hand side, there are bars on the top, create bibliography, if you click, then this appears, citation style editor. If you click there, then a search box will appear. So let's say I want MLN9. In order to reach here, we can take a minute and I can come to you and help. We don't have to do any tasks right now, but I want all of us to be acquainted with this page. So that could be used for the Oh, go ahead. Right. We have to reach to this page. Oh. Yeah, got it. So you can create bibliography or citation editor. And then you can create write, let's say, I don't know, if Emily Mine is my citation style. You can write your citation style, APA, if APA is your style. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's say you write the same right now, Emily Mine. You all could get there? Have we used it earlier? Any of us use it? Nice. Anyone else? You couldn't log in? Yes, you have to log in from this page. The back end is the log in. Yes, you have to look into that case. Could you log in? In this?
Did you? Not yet? I didn't need to talk to Thank you. If you have more experience, remember. We all have you used it earlier, David? No, I just can I use it here. Oh, you can use uh, yes, it also. There are many others also. Uh, you all are there? Yeah. Okay. So now the point is, whenever we write or we complete our literature review, the way to cite, the way to make index citations, the way to re use reference, we'll use this particular. Uh, not only this software, this is just one example. There are many others affiliated with Notre Dame. You can, if you are used to use the other ones, I'm fine with it. Okay? Since it's, it's log, let's log like open logs and habits and new information. It should be, uh, yeah, you can, okay. yeah, you know, yeah, fill up the blanks, then it will show you the citations. And also there are visual, uh, video tutorials how to use this, yeah, so let's say you want to use footnotes, for instance, uh, you want, you can just fill in the gaps like your author names, titles, or if it's a translation work, whatever. If you are used to use not ref for others, that's also fine. So these are only to help and make your work easier. These are software that ND has affiliation with. And for instance, David use which one? Zotero. Zotero. If you are used mm -hmm. to use the other ones, okay. You used to use that. Now you have shifted. So I used to use. Yes, uh, let me show you the other ones also. Just you don't have to log into all of those right now. Just have a look. Uh, Air, Mandolin, yeah. Zotero. So these are the ones. Okay, so we'll use any of these for our citation help. Um, and you can have a look at samples also. How samples of from your discipline, from your field. Uh, things are cited through the ND website, uh, library website, okay? Also, I have attached in the slide uh, Purdue's uh, citation manual. Also here you can APA guide or MLA guide and uh, how to cite the author's name, uh, which edition. It depends from journal to journal. Whenever you're submitting any paper to a journal, your journal will have a guidance that we only accept MLA or APA that or Harvard or Chicago style formatting. Then you have to format your whole thing based on that. Let me show you one particular thing. It's not about only citation. The formatting, when they say formatting, just I have attached a sample, you'll get plenty of such samples in Purdue or Hesburgh sites. For instance, formatting means also spacing. Okay, formatting means also which size of font to use. Formatting means also, uh, should I, uh, let's say, indent or not. Indent as in, you know, it's not the left hand side. There's a little indent and you start the paragraph. So it, this is an MLA format PDF that I uploaded uh, from one of those sites. Uh, if we have a look at the citation page, work cited, let's say here. So this is a, a MLA formatting style where we, the first sentence and the second continuation are a little indent. 
So every citation is different. Formatting is different. That's what I mean. If you are into APA, that might not be. That might. No, that will not at all look like MLA. Okay. So once you have, to, you know your citation formatting style. When you're writing a paper, submitting to a professor, supervisor, or a journal, so you have to know their required citation formatting. All good. That will definitely vary from discipline to discipline. So I hope these three uh, citation guides help. Now the next point is we see different tense in when we are citing, let's say integral, uh, integral citing. When we are using resource subject and verbs. So let's have a look at this particular slide where uh, we have the same verb, investigate. But in five of these sentences, the verb tense will be different. Sometimes it's investigates or have investigated or only past simple, investigated. Now the question is when to use what? That's what we are going to do now. So may I request all of you to guess with any reasoning that comes to your mind, uh, the tense that you want to use for five of these sentences, and then discuss with your uh, mates, and then share with the class. Only five sentences, yeah. And we have almost the same verb, investigate or study. Done? Oh, sorry. It's like because of this. Yeah. What is the option in the question? Oh, uh, investigate. The fourth and fifth? Yeah, investigate. For like the first and second. I mean, the sentence is the same, right? Cause of your delay, causes of your delays. This is the same, the upper delays. The verb for fourth and fifth is investigate. I'm not wrong. Are you sure? Huh? Are you sure? Let me double check. Oh, no. No, no, no. This one is given, you yeah, have been given an option. Thank you for correcting me. The fourth is just auxiliary. The fourth, we don't need a principal verb. I mean, auxiliary will be the principal verb. Amizar was by Shalbi will be giving me in all the auxiliary sessions. Yeah. We don't need a verb like that. Okay. 
Hmm? Now it's fine. I corrected B1. We all have contradictory point of views, or we all are on the same page. Done. You like sharing? Oh. Yes? No, no, no. Each one is different. Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah. It's connected with one passage. Done? Yes. Shall we discuss? Yeah, question <laughs> Now, this one I'll, I'll resolve in a different way. Do we have the book? Or in per usual, you can have, I don't know. You have the book? Yeah. Huh? It's 344. But if you do not have the book, this particular exercise I haven't uploaded in per usual. If you want me to do, I can do it. Do we all have the book? Or anyone can have the book and share with the others. If, if At least in one group, one person has the book. No? You don't have the book? Per usual shows you 344 page? No. 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 Then we... Then I have to do things here. Yes. Page three, four, four, which means uh, here, which is per user three five six. 
So if you have the book, the book page is 344. And if you are you want to search it like this, type here 356. At the top of the, where the box of page number is. Now have a look at the answers. And now ask me questions. You might have objections or might have queries. All the answers are here, by the way, in the book. We all could see it in Parisia. Do you need any help? Yes. Yeah, four weeks. Yeah, otherwise it will, you know, if I give February 8th, then I have to use the time also. Otherwise, let's say, so this is the problem. Yeah, I mean, otherwise it will not give you access. Because that's at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. is the end. Then it will not give you access at 5 o'clock. So that's why I give tomorrow so that now everyone can access. No, you can this. So this is for this addition. I'm expecting questions if you have. You must have questions because. Yeah, please. Okay, so let's talk about it. So let's say you said about the first one. Had investigated or has, has investigated? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, or now you can change your answer, it's fine. No, but we use the, the, the um, present, I mean, perfect. Yeah, yeah, we use the past. Has investigated. So, which is present perfect tense? Reason. Because at first we were saying, like, well, this person, thinks, you know, like, I think we were thinking, like, it's still past because it was in 2007, 2007, but then also, I don't know if there's a Spanish past on that, but in my head I was translating that. Mm -hmm. It makes sense in Spanish to say, oh, this person mm. has been doing this work in mm. this time. Mm -hmm. So that's mm. what. Mm. Mm. And that's fine, totally fine. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah. I'll respond to it. Anyone would like to share something? Particularly about the first one. So we have two options, past simple and present perfect. Please, and, and then like, after uh, we say first one has, then the, question, the following question, is it has or is it has? Like, are we okay, so the so, next question is had, yeah. which is had plus B3 means past perfect. Yeah, exactly. Anyone else would like to add? You want to say something? Please. It depends on the context 
Mm -hmm. what, what he has said and what he's going to say. And that will, that will decide this in truth. Definitely. I mean, that's what they explained. But what's the context you think? Mm -hmm. The difference between these two? Past and this belief, something is happening in the past and we still can prove it. It could be right, but the second one, I think it's wrong because we had investigated, that means it's a curve and in, and we are waiting for another action. So if I say something had, let's say the boss had a past, that means I'm coming to the past still. There's another action. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, I mean, what you mean, perhaps, so one is we're focusing on the person, another is we're focusing on the activity. Do we get these two differences? Several researchers have studied that. Now, time is not important here. When I'm saying several researchers have studied that, the impact of COVID-19, blah, 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 blah. So it's, the, here, time is not important. Here, the activity is important. So we are expecting what's the study is. But if I use, uh, well, investigated, that means I'm focusing on the person. What you did. What result? Yeah, what David investigated. What Jeff investigated, so it's, we are focusing on the person, or your finding. You're talking about what you actually discovered or found. So that's the basic difference. Past simple, you'd hardly see past perfect. There are different rules of using past perfect. I would say, I, I don't think you'll find any examples, even in your scholarly writings, of past perfect. Past perfect, if we use in a sentence which happened before past simple. That's the only case we use past perfect. For example, uh, I... When I went to the past, the past has already... Had already uh, yeah, so, so a past action must be done, and before that past, what happens is past perfect. Okay. So that's a very complicated situation you would not see in literature review style. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's... Yeah, but it's not, we don't use it, but not in this case at all. We do not see it in examples. Uh, yes, we see present perfect. When? When the focus is in the activity. For example, the pattern two. So when, I'm, when we see the causes of airport delays have been widely investigated, so the focus is now not on a person, on the activity. We are all on the same page. Any questions or queries? You got it? That's what the book also says. It uses a different language. It, they call it agent. Researcher activity and the agent. Focusing on the agent means the person. And uh, when we use present simple, that's pretty natural when we are talking about generally the causes of airport delays are complex. So that's a comment. Right? Any confusion about the present simple ones? The last ones, I mean, appears to be, right? That, that's the one? The airport delays appear to have a complex set of causes. We all thought of something else? Please share if you have thought of something else. Or the fourth one. This was the fourth one? The causes of airport delays are complex? Mm -hmm. Right? So what pattern, two, pattern three is? The book says the pattern three is... It's not talking about a researcher activity, right? It's talking about the current knowledge. It's not referring to person or the activity. Then we use present simple. But we also use present simple in case of persons. If you have a look at page 345, when we say Aristotle says, when a very general philosophy or knowledge or theory you are... Um, quoting or you might be referring to which is always applicable possibly 
in those circumstances, you might say present simple even with reporting verbs. So now, um, before we have a look at our scholarly articles, how tenses are used, we have to be careful about that. What kind of reporting verbs are used? We'll, we'll analyze all those things. Before that, let's go to, let's have a look at a few more citation formats and styles in our book. There is another in per user. Click here, quotes and citation. Week four, lecture four B. If you click there, it will take you to task nine and ten. Page number two one six in the book, and if you want to type it in per user, two two eight. Here they have presented a few weak citations. There might be uh, uh, weaknesses in reporting verbs or other flaws. Now we will discuss how we can improve them. Or if it seems fine to you, we'll discuss why. So that's 216, task 9, and task 10. Let's do it in group. Let's not do it alone. Five and five, only 10 examples. Let's do it in group. Mm -hmm. Then it will be faster. This way, exactly. Yeah, that's nine and that's 10. After reading this, just focus what you don't like, what you think would have been improved. And if you don't have suggestions, you can write a line.
No, not necessary. I was just wondering in the core sense of MS and how will you be? Maybe that's rather good. Anything is fine. Okay, you can do it. Hmm? Yeah, stand also. Five and five, ten seconds. That's nine and two. So just focus on the language. You all are done discussing the ten sentences. Nice. Are we all done?
Shall we? I guess we all are done. That's 9 and 10. So let's see. What about the first sentence in task 9? Who would like to respond first? Should I call the name groups or you guys can voluntarily speak if you want? Anyone who would like to share? Or is this perfect? Any suggestions? The first sentence. Okay, one suggestion. Anything else? Okay. Anything else? I have a problem with this sentence at the end of the vineyard. What is written? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please share. Good. And also, uh, I will put it in past tense as cases. Okay. Simple past. Simple past you want to use. Hmm. Because you want to focus on the author. Yeah, because what is after that is actually finding. Okay. I mean, the terms of the article. Uh huh. Uh, that's why I. You prefer I would prefer to use simple past. I prefer simple past. And also, my problem is that, uh, as, I, as far as I remember, the article is more about the importance of the new research. Huh. And it's the importance of I mean, what they describe as the growing. Uh, consumption, consumption of energy drink and caffeine yeah. and the connected the book. And they are yeah. not really show any hazardous effects. Good. He remembered the last task we studied. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good observation. First of all, those who do not know about et al, let me just clarify. It's a Latin phrase. In academic writing, we see a lot of Latin um, terms. And if, which means and others. We do not write and others. We do not write colleagues. We do not write other researchers. We use the first author's last name and we use et al. Okay? Those who do not know. So I'm just sharing this. We have lots, we have a separate class on it, on the Latin phrases and the usage of Latin phrases in academic writing. There's a list of such abbreviations that you might often see in your paper or in the scholarly articles. And the next point, about the supporting verb, anyone else would like to say? Or who would prefer this one in present simple, not past tense? No observation? Or we all agree that we should, you want to use it in past simple? Should I consider the silence as uh, consent, a proof of consent with David? Yes, when if you use past simple, that would change the meaning of the sentence. That's what I mean. So if you use stated that, there is one grammatical flaw, by the way. If you state that, if you use that, do not use how. That's unnecessary. Yeah. Double, double, I mean, WH word or that, that would be the same meaning. You can use how without using that, but if you use that, how is not written. Okay, that's one point. Uh, the content, yes, that's a different thing. Uh, what the passage says, and I'm not talking about the content, but let's talk about the linguistic approach. First of all, we do not need the full name. Yes, we need also the publication like 2009, 10, 17, whatever, when it was talked about, the way the citation styles uh, you, we use. We do not need, and colleagues, let's talk about the reporting verb. So you want it in present simple the way it is here, or you want it in past simple? Present? Anyone else? So he said he prefers in past simple. Uh, stated that caffeine and content in energy drinks may be hazardous to our health. When you use past simple, it would refer to the person, always remember. 
So it depends your previous sentence and next sentence, what that is, what the topic of your discussion is. But if you use present simple, I'm not saying it's wrong in present simple to use here. In that case, you are actually focusing on the knowledge. That means your passage is talking about uh, the drinks and maybe hazard to store health on the consumption of energy drinks and caffeine. And in your topic, this person just popped up for a certain reason, maybe. Yeah, the person may not be a focus of that passage. So be careful about using reporting verbs. That's it. It's not wrong to use past simple or present simple. It will change the whole meaning of the content. Okay, the next sentence. My question in the next sentence, let me be precise. Do we need the title? We do not need the title if we are using work citation or bibliography later on or a footnote later on in the, at the bottom of the page or at the end of that essay. We do not need to mention in our passage the title. But if we do not use a reference like that, footnote or work citation, we can use that. But in any research publications, we definitely use footnotes or endnotes or uh, bibliography. So we do not need to restate the title here. That's one thing. What about the reporting verb? Claims. That's a nice reporting verb. Let's talk about the tense also. When you use claim, that means you're focusing on the knowledge, not on the person's activity. In that case, I would suggest it's a present simple is more uh, suitable when you use claims. Make sense? Let's go to the next. Again, restating of the title. Uh, again, the uh, colleagues, we don't need to use that. Anything else for the third sentence you would like to focus or you have some other findings? Nothing, nothing else? We can move to the next. Mention is a very weak reporting verb. You know, states could be, or stated if you want to use past tense, but mention is a very weak. It does not refer what you actually mean by saying that, that he mentioned this. Mention is a very weak one. Uh, yeah, that's all about task nine. We have four minutes left, so just without asking you, let me give you my opinion about the five sentences. That would be faster. Uh, say, we do not use such reporting verbs like say. And that's very weak reporting verb. Uh, about reporting verbs, I also commented on a few summarization uh, feedback, page 211 in the book. They have a list of reporting verbs based on 211 to 213. 211 to 213, uh, they have a list of reporting verbs based on disciplines, field specific for engineering, for education, for humanities. Uh, there's a huge list there. If you think you need to study those reporting verbs, you can have a look at them. Uh, in addition, the article also discusses the caffeine levels. Here, citation is needed. There is no citation here. Citation as in author's name, et al., publication here. And that, that sentence is very non-academic. The third one. We do not write... Do we need finally in sentence one? Finally? Uh, finally is not wrong to use, but here the whole subject is... It, it, it needs a... It, it has to be modified and rewritten. It should be rewritten. This, this particular sentence. But finally is... Uh, usable, yeah. but not here. I can't write it in the start of the sentence. Yeah, so, yeah. we cannot write it there. If you're explaining something and finally you reach to a conclusion, you can do that. Here, have a look. In Shams' article, in the, that's not the way we write. In this article, uh, Rasid stated that, claimed that, that's the way we write. Make sense? In this article, then you mention the name of the person. If it's plural, you use et el, but do not use an apostrophe, et el's article. 
you know, that's, that's not a ghetto. Uh, same here, conclude that current research is insufficient. Here also, uh, it's, it's incomplete the sentence by the way. What's the current research you should mention when you're citing in this way? We do not know anything. What's the conclusion or what the current research is? The sentence is ambiguous here. Make sense? And definitely, I already talked about it, so I'm gonna not, not gonna repeat that the way you cite. Et el is, should, should have been used. Also others, that's not the way we use. Uh, here also, the current risks, we do not know what, what you're talking about by saying just current risks. You know? So just to be specific and precise, that would be better. So that's all just before we leave. I have to show you something. Go to Canvas module. You have one minute and that would be enough. This is our homework. So if we open this doc file, we would see I requested all of you to fill up this table. This table is talking about what we just discussed, the way we have uh, analyzed citations from the book. Now, from the research articles that you submitted. Uh, scholarly articles, the three samples that you have provided. So talk about, is it integral or non-integral in your discipline? The first article, the second, the third. Then share one example, one sentence. If it's in APA or MLA, just write that. Okay? Then uh, what else? the tense. The next box is about the tense. Are there any block quotations? Block quotations means when you quote a complete passage, not one, two, three phrases or sentences. That's called block quotations. So if there is any block quotation, how it is presented? What's the format of it? How, many, uh, how frequent uh, citations are in your field? Is it too much or in which section? In methodology, in discussion, or in, in introduction? Where do you see them most? Just mention that. Any other observations you have? That's it. You have to download it and submit in Canvas. There is a section where you can submit it. That's also open. Can, yeah. you, can you extend the deadline? Can Before next class? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I agree. Yeah, I, I have. That's what the deadline is. Because it's going to be. Yeah, because it's a weekend and then Monday is good enough. Yeah. 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 Before next class. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, it was a pleasure.